Hi, good morning. I'm Bart Comstock. I'm a member here at CIV, and my family and I, we've been attending since the beginning of 2022. And prior to coming to church here, we had served as missionaries uh, for three years in Ecuador. Uh, Pastor Randy had asked me to share with you guys today uh, as we're continuing in our series uh, in the Psalms. So today we're going to look at Psalms of Lament. And what that means is uh, lament is to express a deep sorrow or grief or regret or any kind of um, just deep, full emotion. Um, have you ever had a deep grief or a sorrow? Have you ever had a deep need or you had some kind of regret? Um, maybe you've had something that was just so heavy on your heart that you had to confess it or you had to ask for, um, you just had to ask God for help with it. You know, we've all had something that was gnawing at us, something that was eating us up on the inside. And we've had something that was just weighting down on us. And it was so heavy on our mind that we just couldn't move past it. Um, perhaps there's been a time where you had just some in intense emotion or just a real time of struggle. Maybe it's a time when you felt like you needed to be rescued. So for us, within a couple months of us moving down to Ecuador, um, we, we had all gotten sick to some degree or the other. I'll spare you the, the graphic details, but in a month I had lost about 20 pounds because of, we'll just say intestinal issues. Um, Lori got a really bad staph infection on her leg. All of our girls had really bad bug bites and they just wouldn't heal and their skin got infected. And we didn't speak the language very well when we got there. And we had daily Spanish lessons, but we still struggled to communicate with, with our neighbors there and with the people that we had gone there to serve. And so it was, it was late one night, it was raining really hard. We lived in, in the jungle area, so it, it rained all the time. But this night, it was just raining so hard. And I was sitting on the floor of our front porch on the ground, and I just started to weep. It was raining hard. It was dark, and I was crying. And I asked God, why is this so difficult? Why were we so sick? Why were my kids homesick? And I asked, if we were to come here if we were supposed to be here and serve, then why were things so difficult? Where's this joy that's supposed to come from serving the Lord? So let's look at the passage for today. Psalm 28. Now, David wrote Psalm 28, and the first part of the psalm, David is asking God. He's asking God to hear him. And then he asks that God would spare him from the same fate as the wicked. And then at the end, David is praising God. So verse one is, to you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I will become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications. When I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. So David is really asking to be heard. He's crying out. He's asking God not to be silent. So in Hebrew poetry, like here in the Psalms, they don't use a meter, they don't use rhyming words, but what they do use are repeated words and repeated ideas. If something is said twice, it's important. And if it's said three times, then it's really important. You want to pay attention to that. So in these first two verses, twice David says he's going to cry out. He's crying out to the Lord. And twice he asks God not to be silent to his cries. He wants an answer. He's saying, if, 
if you're silent to me, I'm going to be like those who go down to the pit. Who are those that go down to the pit or what are they like? They're, well, they're dead. They're in a world of torment. So he's saying, if you are silent to me, it's going to kill me. So he's saying, God, please don't be silent. This is a prayer. This is a prayer where he's asking fervently for a response. This isn't a, this isn't a prayer like when you say, Lord, please bless this food or bodies, where it's just, you know, kind of thrown out there. This isn't a ritualistic prayer. This is something intense. There's a lot of meaning behind it. The other thing that's interesting here is that um, David calls God, or it says, Oh Lord, my rock. So whenever rock is used in the Bible, it always refers to God. It's never referred to a person. So I have this visual aid here uh, just to help you remember that um, in modern times, we call people the rock or kid rock or Chris rock. But in the Bible, it talks about the rock as referring to God. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, verse 3. So do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. So now we're getting to what David is asking. He sees this evil all around him, and he sees evil people, uh, and he wants to make sure that God sees him as separate from those evil people. And he wants to make sure that he's not counted with those evil people and that he doesn't suffer the same fate that they're going to suffer. Jeremiah 9.8 says, Their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaks deceit. One speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he lies in wait. I guess maybe a modern example of what this is, is of people speaking peace to their neighbors, but, but there's still evil in their heart, is um, you, you might see a group of people that's, confessing for sins they didn't commit that happened a long time ago. But at the same time, they're trying to push an idea of uh, kind of compromising our children or doing harm to our children. So they say they're about peace and confessing these awful things, but which they had nothing to do with. But what they are doing right now, they're trying to hide behind it. Verse 4, give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Now, here David, he's really distancing himself from the wicked. And he's asking God to give, uh, give the wicked give to the wicked according to their deeds and to give them what they deserve. So in, in David's heart, he's, he's able easily to discern what's evil when it's someone else. But a flaw in David is that when there's an evil that he's committed, sometimes he's blind to see it. So in 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan comes to David and he says, uh, let me tell you a story. There were two men that lived in a town, a rich man and a poor man. And the rich man had lots and lots of sheep. But the poor man only had one sheep. In fact, it was a, a baby ewe, so a little baby female lamb. And he loved this lamb. This lamb ate from the same table with him, uh, ate, ate the same food and drink as the man, even slept in the same bed with the man. And... If, if that man had a stroller, if they had strollers back then, then he would carry that little lamb around with him. That would, be, that would have been his little fur baby. And he loved this lamb so much that it wasn't even a farm animal at this point. This was his pet. And so a visitor comes to town, and the rich man, being hospitable, serves food to the visitor. But he doesn't use one of his own sheep. He takes the lamb from that poor man and... When David heard this, he said, you know, that man is so wicked. He needs to repay the poor man four times for what he's taken from him. And Nathan says, David, you're the man. That's you. Because what David had done is 
he had he had someone killed. So Nathan says to to David, he says, you know, God's given you Israel and Judea. He's given you this house. He's given you lots of wives. And if all of that wasn't enough, all you had to do is ask and who would have given you more. But you sent Uriah the Hittite out to be killed. And then you took his wife and you guys are going to have a baby. But what's going to happen is because of your sin, that baby's going to die. That's the, the repercussions of your actions. And so the baby was born. David fasted for seven days and the baby died. But he sought forgiveness from the Lord and God removed his sin. He took it away. David was forgiven for what he did. Verse 6, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. So now David, in this psalm, he's praising God because God listened to him. And he credits God as being the source of his strength. And now he's joyful. He's joyful because God has listened. He's not going to suffer the same fate as the wicked. He's, he's forgiven. And he's giving all the praise back to the Lord. Verse 8. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also, and bear them up forever. So this blessing this strength, this saving grace, it's not just for David, but it's for all of God's chosen people. God's chosen people are the ones that, in their time of need, they, they go to him and they rely on him and they ask him for their strength. They're not trying to do it on their own. So things did get better for us in Ecuador. We went to different doctors and we were able to get treatments for our girls um, for their bug bites. And our tummies got uh, acclimated to our new environment and our language skills improved over time. And through God's provision, we were a part of a project that impacted about 200 children in this small village. And church groups from the United States they funded the construction of a, of a church building, of a kitchen, of classrooms. And um, myself, along with another missionary, we trained up an Ecuadorian man who had been part of another local church for some time. And he, today he serves as pastor for the church plant that we were part of. So I guess I would just say that in the darkness... You know, you might just see the one step you're on, maybe a little bit of the next. But in the light, you can see the joy that God will bring. So some next steps would be just to cry out to God. Tell him where you're at. Tell him what you're going through. Because he already knows, but it's just good for your soul to speak it out. And God didn't send his son, Jesus, to condemn you <clears throat> because we're already condemned. He sent Jesus to rescue us from that condemnation. And if you've never made a decision to follow after Jesus, I would encourage you to speak with one of the pastors, one of the community group leaders, or myself, and we can show you what does it look like to repent and put your faith in Jesus. Because he has the power to remove your sin, just like he removed it from David. Lastly, don't do it alone. Don't try to be the lone ranger on this one. Just like Nathan came along and spoke truth into David's life, there are so many of us here that want to speak truth into your life. One way is the community groups that meet during the week. Another way is the, the meetups that we have during the summer. And then there's other groups that, that meet at different times. So just, just get involved in the church 
and be willing to be a little bit vulnerable and share what's on your heart. Um, God's already prepared the way. He's just working to prepare you. So let's pray. Lord, I just ask that um, you bless this person watching right now, that you would reveal to them um, the areas that they need to, to share with you, um, that you would um, just speak in their, into their life, Lord, and um, help guide them on their journey. In Jesus' name, amen.